This past Sunday, we, we capped off the Unqualified series. Something I was wondering was, how do you want the Encounter community to respond now that the series has concluded? Yeah. Um, one thing that I don't want to see happen is uh, for everybody in this community to go out and suddenly feel like they're qualified. We're not. Uh, that's important. Yeah, it's, it, it's good to remember that the point of the series, God uses unqualified people like us. Uh, something I was wondering about you though, we ended the series with this scene, a beautifully simple, Mary Magdalene and her risen Lord, Jesus Christ, in the tomb. What did that mean to you? Yeah. I think Mary standing in the tomb with, with Jesus on Easter Sunday is such a simple yet beautiful picture. Yeah. Because since that time, we're more than 2,000 years removed from that scene. So all, all this like cultural baggage and meaning of what Christianity yep. is has been like thrown onto that. So, so this first Easter Sunday of just Jesus and Mary standing in the tomb is the heart of the gospel, which I would say is that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us and let's go tell people about it. And that's just so simple and so yeah. beautiful. But something I was wondering was you talked about Chad and his, his story of, of years of sobriety and kind of these ups and downs, peaks and valleys. What do you do for someone who doesn't feel quite like that? Maybe they're a Sunday school kid, have been going right. to church their whole life, and never really done that many bad yeah. things. How, how does the gospel apply to their lives? Yeah, I see why you're asking this. Student ministries director, this is the question you get more than anything else. <laughs> you want me to do your homework for you? Uh, I'll try. Uh, in case you missed it, I held up uh, Chad's coin that he got from eight years of sobriety at AA. This is an incredible, incredible life transformation story that God is telling here at church. Um, but the question though is about what, what about the rest of us who aren't like Chad? Right, that have kind of these, these ordinary plain stories. And for the rest of us, I think we have to see that, that there are these two forms of grace that God puts on us in this world. The first one is the stories of grace in Chad's life that we see God covering that. Uh, people like Chad with this monumental amount of grace to cover all of the junk and all of the garbage uh, in his past. But there's also this other form of grace at work and it's more subtle and sometimes it's more difficult to see. It's the form of grace where God is operating around somebody's life to prevent them from experiencing those valleys and that junk and that garbage in the first place. And you know, as a parent of two kids, I've got a six-year-old and a three-year-old at home. I so badly want my kids to experience that second form of grace so that they don't have to go to those deep valleys to experience the love of God, that they can do that in kind of the ordinary, you know, plain uh, sort of way of life. And as our Heavenly Father, I know that God also wants that uh, for us as well. It does lead though uh, to the next uh, series that we're doing here at church called Rooted, about how God uh, grows not only a wide faith, but He also grows this deep faith. Uh, and that is something that just takes time.